Good morning, my name is David Dawson and this is another edition of the Mayesh Minute. You know, the internet is an amazing resource and you can find a lot of information on there about flowers and flower care. But for me, I have found the, the best resource is going through thrift stores and used bookstores to find old books because they address flower care of rare and unusual flowers that, quite frankly, is, you cannot find on the internet. It also addresses the fashions and the kind of flowers that were being used through the ages. And I think some of this information will surprise you. Uh, for instance, I have this book here. This is Conway's Treasury of Flower Arrangements from 1955, a fantastic book. It is a wealth of information on caring for flowers. They've got such esoteric things as petunias, as um, Francoa sanchifolia, which you hardly see anymore. Um, the kale, rainbow kale, how to take care of it and get it ready and hydrated for arrangements. And here, look at this. We all thought that underwater arrangements was a, 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 a gimmick from the 1990s. And look at this, 1955, Agapanthus submerged at the bottom of this rather interesting blue and pink arrangement. Um, I can, again, this is an example of what you can find in old books. I have here another great book. This is Flowers in History by Peter Coates. Uh, this uh, goes through several flowers, popular. It, it tells you about magnolias. Magnolias, a great cup flower, but one of the reasons they have such strong, waxy cup flowers is because they were in the scheme of evolution before flying insects. So the flowers had to be able to support the heavy weight of beetles running across the blooms to pollinate the, the flowers. And also here, look at this. Carnations. This is for an illustration from the 1800s. Look, that's one page from a carnation salesman's book. Look at all these blooms. Right here, red, white, and blue. How will that go down on the July 4th? Fantastic. Like I say, I mean, these things are lost to us today, and it just shows you, you can find so much in these books. I have here, this is Flora Domestica. This is a history of British flower arranging from 1500 to 1930. Very comprehensive goes over many, many different aspects of flower arrangement and flower history. And right here, I'll just give you a quick glimpse. That is a Flemish, a painting of a Flemish arrangement, really quite contrived. Um, but this sort of style is resurging in popularity. And you can see much like today when people say they want to combine elements that are in season, out of season, which we achieve by bringing flowers from the Southern hemisphere and combining with the North. Uh, I mean, they have flowers here, they have roses here. They have beautiful little um, auricula, which is hard to find. They have very early uh, skilla, uh, and up here, poppies and roses, which would come in the summer. So they're combining different elements. This is because they were interested more in the painting and the composition. But this idea has been taken up and, and really promoted by people like Sarah Rihanna and at Saipua. I really recommend this book. Here's one of my favorite books of all time. This is from night, published in 1939, right before World War II. It's by Constance Spry. It's a garden notebook. And this also has a wealth of information about flower care, how to handle flowers. Again, prescient, I will tell you about the, um, again, 1939 she addresses underwater flowers. Look at this. I do this rarely because this sort of trick does not generally appeal to me and I definitely dislike seeing flowers submerged in water probably because although they may look quite pretty I know that they are beginning to soften and decay I mean a great insight and this book fantastic I'll just give you a look here uh, although it's black and white really glorious arrangement listen to this it has seed heads kale spirea isatis sunflower wine berries, yellow yarrow, and many others in a copper urn. And some of the others, you know, they have, uh, looks like nine bark, many other things just coming back into fashion again. And a really loose composition. Fantastic book. I highly recommend all of uh, Constance Spry's books. Uh, here, fascinating. This is more historical. Um, it's called The Tulip by Anna Pavord. Uh, has many, many illustrations and great stories. Here's one of the illustrations, uh, one of my favorites of um, tulips. These are called the bizarres from the way they break. I mean, amaz amazing black and white. Um, 
little known that after the tulips crashed in the uh, early 17th century, it was the English who carried on the tradition and promoted tulips. But you see that little picture, when you're online on the internet, you will see little pictures. And I have here, a, this is a, an exact copy, reproduction of an original flower folio. This is what they used prior to uh, you know, the 20th century, really to look at flowers. Fantastic book. This is called The Temple of Flora. And I want you just to see the full-size version of that print uh, in the little books, or you might see on the internet. Absolutely glorious. You can see these tulips, the bazaars. These breaks were caused, they now know, by aphids carrying a virus into the uh, bulb and uh, making it change color. But look at this, absolutely amazing. And, and it really does increase our understanding of the early flowers. Look at these carnations again from the early 1800s. And last but not least, um, these wonderful garden roses, again, coming back into fashion. So one of the things I've found, uh, as the flower business is a fashion industry, that one of the things you can really learn is if you look backwards in time, you can really create wonderful, fresh new designs for the future. I hope this has been of assistance to all florists and professionals everywhere. My name is David Dawson, and this has been another edition of the Mayesh Minute.